Hi everybody. Welcome to the Musical Homestead. My name's Jenny. It's time for music theory. What is music theory? I can't wait to explain it to you. Let's get started. If you were to pick up a sheet of music, you would see things that you might not recognize. There's a lot of lines and spaces. There's clefts and symbols. We might not know what those are. Hmm. There's words in different languages. What does that mean? When you learn a new language, you have to learn all the building blocks that make that language possible. In music, you have to learn the building blocks as well. We call that music theory. So we are going to start a journey to learn the language of music using music theory. Here's the deal. You have found our Theory Musica track. Now, this is geared towards our sixth grade through adult learners. If you are younger than sixth grade, I'm gonna link in the description below our elementary theory track. That one's perfect for you. So I wanna make sure that you find the right track that you need to find based on your age. Now, the next thing you need is our textbook. Our textbook is gonna be the Fundamentals of Piano Theory, and this is the preparatory book that we're going through. We are starting at the very beginning of theory, and I can't wait for you guys to join us and learn all these wonderful new things. I'm gonna link in the description below a way that you can get the textbook. You also are gonna want the answer key to make sure that you're doing things correctly since I'm not right there with you. So both of those are gonna be linked in the description below. Once you pick those up, then you get to go on the journey with us. We're gonna get started with unit one today. The first note we're gonna learn about is a quarter note. A quarter note is made up of two different parts. First, we have the stem, which is this line, and then we have the note head, which is this circle. You're gonna notice that the note head is completely filled in, and that's really important as we look at some of our other notes. The note head's completely filled in, and the stem, if it goes down, it goes in front of the note head, and if the stem goes up, it goes behind the note head. This looks like the letter P, and that looks like the letter D. A quarter note gets one count. The next note we're gonna talk about is a half note. And if you notice, a half note looks an awful lot like a quarter note. There's just one thing that's different. Our half note still has our stem. If the stem goes down, it goes in front of the note head. And if the stem goes up, it goes behind the note head. It still has the note head, but this time the note head is not colored in. It's just open. So when it's open like this, that makes it a half note. A half note is gonna get two counts, or we could say two beats. And then down here, I have a fun mathematical equation where one half note equals one plus one, or two quarter notes. The next note we're gonna look at is a dotted half note. Now, if you notice, a dotted half note looks an awful lot like a half note. But the difference is we have a dot that's right behind the note head. When we add that dot to the half note, it becomes a dotted half note, and it's worth three counts or beats. And down here with my musical math, I have a dotted half note, and I have one plus one plus one. A dotted half note is gonna equal three quarter notes. We still have our stem. If it goes down, it goes in front of the note head, and if it goes up, it goes behind the note head. And we still have our note head, it's empty, but the difference is we have a dot. And this is what our dotted half note is gonna look like. The next note we're gonna talk about today is a whole note. A whole note looks a little bit different than the other three notes we just learned because it only has a note head. It's not filled in, just this empty note head, and there's no stem. A whole note is gonna be four counts or four beats. And down here, we can see with my musical math, a whole note is equal to four quarter notes. One plus one plus one plus one. Our whole note is different from the other three, and we need to remember that it gets four counts or beats. Musicians often utilize something called a note tree, so we can see the relationship between notes. This note tree today is using three of the notes that I just introduced to you. The top note is our whole note, which gets four counts. Then we have two half notes, which each get two counts, and then four quarter notes. They are all getting one count. What this shows us is that our whole note that gets four counts is gonna be equal to two half notes, which each get two counts, and each half note is gonna be equal to one, two quarter notes. One plus one equals two, and then here, two plus two equal four. 
It also shows us that four quarter notes, one, two, three, four, are gonna be equal to one whole note. I would recommend getting a sheet of paper and writing this down somewhere so you have it for reference all the time. Now we're gonna talk about an eighth note. An eighth note has three different parts to it. We still have our stem. If it goes down, it goes in front of the note head. If it goes up, it goes behind the note head. We still have our note head. It's all filled in for this eighth note. The piece that we have that's new is a flag. This part of the note is a flag. It's right here and it's right there. The flag is on an eighth note when an eighth note is traveling by itself without anything else. It's, it has a flag on it. Now down here, two eighth notes can travel together and they have this line and that line is called a beam. And over here, when four eighth notes travel together, there can be a beam as well to beam all four of them together. Now I've written up here that an eighth note is equal to one half of a count or beat. And so down here you can see that two eighth notes are going to equal one quarter note. And four eighth notes then are gonna equal one half note. Eighth notes are the first note that can look different in music. It can look when it's by itself, it can look like this with the flag. When it's in a group of two, it can have this beam. And it can also travel in a group of four and all be beamed together. The last note we're gonna learn about is a dotted quarter note. In our last lesson, we had a dotted half note, and we learned that the dot has to go behind the note head. Today, we're talking about a dotted quarter note. A dotted quarter note is our quarter note, so we have our filled in note head and our stem with a dot behind it. A dotted quarter note is gonna equal one and a half counts. And down here with my musical math, it kind of describes what we're gonna do. So this dotted quarter note is gonna equal one, two, three eighth notes, or it can equal one quarter note and one eighth note. For right now, you wanna memorize that a dotted quarter note gets one and a half counts. You made it through unit one. Great job. I'm so proud of you. So we learned about six different notes. We learned about how many counts they all get. We also learned about the different parts of the note. So we have the note head and then we have the stem and then the eighth notes have that little flag. So we learned all, all of our terminology, which is awesome. We learned about how many counts they all get. So that's really good too. Here's the deal. We got to get that stuff stuck in our head. So there's three things I want you to do before you start unit two. Oh, that kind of rhymes. I like it. What I want you to do is number one, I want you to do all the pages in your textbook. You'll see where they are. I want you to fill those out. Make sure the things are stuck in your head. Number two, I'm going to link in the description below a video I want you to watch, which further explains how these notes fit in a measure. And the spoiler alert is we're going to learn what a measure is in unit two. So that's coming. And then three, I want you to go to my website. It's called themusicalhomestead.com. At the top, you'll see a tab that says Theory Musica. And when you click on that, you'll see another tab that says Preparatory. I want you to click on that. You will see a little thing that says help. And I, I came up with some help pages for you. It's just basically all the information that's in this chapter, in this unit. And I want you to download that and keep it somewhere. So it's a quick reference when you're confused and you don't remember what we talked about. That way you won't have to go back to the book or you won't have to go back to this video. It'll just be all on that sheet of paper. So check that out too. There's even a fun little game at the end that I want you to see if you can figure out. I am so thankful that you're joining us on this theory journey. We are gonna have fun and we're gonna learn music along the way. So before you go, make sure you give us a thumbs up, click subscribe wherever it is. I wanna make sure you don't miss out on anything in the theory journey. Once you've done those three things and you think you're ready, find the next video. It'll be Fundamentals of Piano Theory, the Preparatory Level, Unit Two. I cannot wait to see you next time. Until then, have fun learning music.